Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. With all the diets out there uh, to choose from, it can be really confusing as to what is the right thing to do for your health and to decrease chance of developing different um, health conditions like cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes. Um, it's like, should you follow a high, high carb, a low fat diet or a, a low carb, high fat diet? Um, it's confusing. And then if you look at the medical literature, it's sometimes not all that helpful because uh, you can find really well done studies that show that a high carb, low fat diet is very helpful for decreasing the risk factors of cardiovascular disease. And then you find the same thing with low carb, high fat diet. And so what's up with that? One of the things really that's up with that is if you look at the way that uh, they were tested, whether they're doing it on uh, animal models or they're doing it on um, human subjects, one of the things that you'll see that is a common denominator between these two different kind of diet categories, and we could throw another one in there. You talk about, should you follow a gluten-free diet? What is a common denominator between these different diet types and, and what's reported in the medical literature is that when a diet is um, kind of constructed for testing purposes, um, they remove a very, very key factor that's a common denominator, and that's processed food. We know that when a food is processed, that's really what makes it toxic. And so even if you're eating, you know, a high carb diet, some people, you know, a high carb diet can be many things. It could be lots of soda and pasta and breads and cookies and chips. That's a high carb diet. But when you read the literature on a high carb diet, um, you know, uh, Dean Ornish, like his diet is considered a high carb diet. Uh, some versions of the Mediterranean diet are considered high carb diets but they're not talking about those kind of foods. They're talking about whole foods. They're not talking about processed foods. So they're talking about things like beans and they're talking about um, things like uh, below ground vegetables, like sweet potatoes and those kind of things. They're high in carbohydrate, but they're also high in antioxidants, they're high in fiber, they're high in micronutrients, they're very healthy and they could provide a lot of great nutrition for the body. So that's one of the common denominators is the is the processed food. And in the medical literature, they actually refer to th things called ultra processed foods. Um, and so ultra processed foods is something that um, researchers have been interested in recently. As our food system actually increases in the amount of ultra processing, uh, researchers are curious about that. And they wanna see, is that a risk factor for, um, for disease and death? And so some, uh, a couple really interesting, very recent uh, studies were just published in a very reputable, uh, a reputable journal uh, called the British Medical Journal, the BMJ. And the British Medical Journal is one of the top tier uh, European journals. And, um, and these studies were just published just um, a couple months ago, within the last couple months. And uh, here's what they looked at. One of the studies looked at um, over 105, this one was out of France, is they looked at over 105,000 uh, subjects, adult subjects, and they evaluated the diets of over 105,000 individuals, and then they tracked them for 10 years. And they're looking at uh, a specific thing. They wanted to find out what is the risk factor for death by cardiovascular disease, uh, cerebrovascular disease, and uh, coronary heart disease. Um, and, and they tracked them over this 10 year period, and here's what they found. They looked at, they dove into all the data of the diets from these 105,000 individuals. And what they found out is that the higher the amount of ultra processed food, the greater the degree of death by these three categories, cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular and coronary heart disease. And um, the statistics kind of work like this. For every 10% uh, sort of absolute increase of ultra processed fru food, there is a significant increase. Um, I believe it went 12%, uh, 13%, and 11% for these uh, three different um, conditions, cardiovascular disease, uh, coronary heart disease, and cerebrovascular disease. And um, so that's a really significant increase um, of risk factor and death in this 10 year period of time following these subjects. And so you go, oh, I don't eat ultra processed food. That's, 
you know, I, I might have some processed food, but not ultra processed food. Well, yeah, you're probably having ultra processed food uh, because what that is, that's soda, that's, um, you know, baked goods that you'll find in a box like cookies and crackers and chips, those kind of things, um, frozen dinners, um, even uh, they talked about dehydrated uh, vegetable soup, highly processed. So these ultra processed foods, that sounds like something that would really be eaten. No, there's some, um, there's some communities that consume 60% of their diet is this ultra processed food. And so it's very common, it's very high, it's very increasing, and it's very deathly. It very much increases your risk factor for these very, very common causes of death. Um, and so there's another study um, out of Spain and they looked at almost 20,000 individuals and it was similar in some regards. They tracked them over a 10 year period and they took a deep dive into their diets and they kind of categorized all, a whole bunch of different foods. I think is over is like 3,000, 3,500 different foods and they categorized them into uh, degrees of processing. And so they came out with a category similar to the other study of ultra processed food. And here's what they found out with this one. When there is um, a, a high degree of consumption of ultra processed food, and the way they quantified that was at least four servings a day of ultra processed food. For every um, four servings that's considered a high amount of consumption of this ultra processed food. And what they found is that there's if you had four or more servings per day of these uh, ultra processed foods, there was a 62% increase in, they looked at um, all cause mortality, meaning death by any, any condition, not just the, the three that we talked about with the French study. Um, so it could be all cause death, um, had a 62% increase risk factor by having just four or more servings of these uh, processed foods per day. And uh, to take that a little bit further, they also looked at for every one more serving beyond that four servings per day, there is an additional 18% risk factor for all cause mortality, for increasing your chance of death within that, uh, they evaluated that 10 year period of time. So these are really, really, really significant numbers. So this really speaks to the commonality between benefit of removing these ultra processed foods, whether it's a high carb, you know, low fat diet or a low carb, high fat diet. It's all about the processing. Um, some would say from person to person, there might be other specific reasons why a person should go on, you know, specifically a low carb or high carb diet from, but from general population studies, it's the removal of these ultra processed foods that um, is really the key link between the benefit from you know pretty much any type of diet that you can think of getting the processing out that's really what makes the food toxic um, and then they also evaluated the flip side to that they looked at what about the diets that were lowest in ultra processed food how did that benefit the subjects and yes there was a significant benefit they didn't give really the statistical analysis of it but they sort of described it as a significant decrease in the risk factor of all-cause mortality when at the lowest levels of ultra processed food consumption um, and so it's interesting the researchers were pretty passionate about the statistics that they found in these studies and they called for you know major governmental policy changes that uh, to really make a really strong effort to um, educate people about these statistics and make certain policy changes to really help to decrease consumption of these foods that are killing people from in multiple ways and there has to be further studies and there will be further studies now that this information is out and these were very large very well done published in a very uh, high quality journal so there will absolutely be further testing on this because here's what we need to know we understand the association okay ultra process increase your chance of dying from like everything um, but why? Why is that happening? We need to know what's the mechanism that's happening in the body or the mechanisms. There's probably multiple me mechanisms. Is it causing uh, imbalance of the gut microbiome and that is somehow 
creating a cascade of problems that lead to death? Is it uh, a more inflammation? Is this these ultra processed foods causing uh, increased degree of inflammation in the body? We know we had lots of past episodes on uh, how inflammation can increase risk factors of all kinds of things. Um, is it causing blood sugar dysregulation? Um, and then that's causing a whole cascade of events to happen in the system or some combination of those things or things that we don't even know about and we just they just have to be studied. So that'll be the next kind of interesting set of studies that they'll evaluate, really di taking a deep dive into the underlying mechanics, the physiology of why these ultra processed foods are um, causing such um, high degrees of health problems. So. Um, you better believe I will be looking for those, those studies. I'll be reading them and then I will bring the information. Until then, keep it real.